welcome back. I want to show you something today, and that's the Garrard Type A Mark II turntable, or record changer. I have other turntables in the house that are better turntables. They are more accurate, they track better, they sound better, they have more expensive cartridges on them. But the Garrard Type A Mark II is, I think, the most fascinating. And it sits at the front of my house, in our living room, where we tend to have some older equipment. So this is a interesting mid-century era record changer that I want you to check out. So take a look, come see why I love it, and let's talk about that a bit. All right, so the Type A Mark II, why did I purchase it when I have a nice Technics turntable in the den for listening? I wanted to find a turntable that I could use to listen to 78s. I, the house, this house here that we're sitting in, uh, when I moved into it, the previous owner who had passed away had left behind a massive 78 uh, record collection, and I'm telling you hundreds, there's hundreds of records. But I ended up purchasing this Garrard record changer so I could listen to these 78 albums. So my turntable I have in the den doesn't support 78 speeds, a 33 RPM and a 45 RPM turntable. But this Garrard can play 78s and it can also play 16 RPM records, 16 and two thirds. I have never even heard of those, but it has that ability also. So let me bring you back to when I purchased this record player. I was looking for a record player online and I found a Garrard 201. And I thought it looked pretty cool. It was kind of a standard design, but it looked interesting. And I ended up purchasing it. It arrived broken, so I needed to purchase a new turntable. So I ended up finding this uh, Type A Mark II turntable. And I thought it was really cool for a specific function. Now this also arrived and also came damaged and I spent a lot of time fixing it up to the best of my ability. And that was a very frustrating few weeks. Shipping a turntable, especially one of these, which has 8,000 gears underneath that are just exposed to peanuts and plastic and everything if it's not wrapped properly, it's a nightmare. But after fighting with it for weeks for not putting down the arm correctly, for not pushing records off the changer, for not, uh, or for having tons of rumble noise, I finally got to a point where I use it to enjoy 78s. So let's take a look. This record player was made by Garrard. They're a company that was established in 1915, and they actually technically exist today, but it's not the same company. The company was sold and bought a million times, so now it's just one of those holding companies where they release whatever they want under the brand name. Uh, or at least that's what it was till recently, uh, when they actually are now offering a turntable again. But, we'll digress from that. Uh, the, the turntable you're looking at is the Mark II. So, the Type A turntable was released in the late 1950s. Um, it's a laboratory grade, it's part of their laboratory series uh, of turntables. Uh, so it's very, supposed to be a very precise, accurate turntable that can uh, play you know, across the spectrum of different speeds and handle, handle them all, handle all the records. So I want you to take a look at this record playing. So let's, let's just play, let's just put a record on and let's play it. And we can see it drops down. But there's something different happening here. If you've seen record changers in the past, you know that they kind of sit on a, a spindle in a perpendicular and they kind of just drop down because there's this little mechanism in the spindle that allows them to drop down. But this player works differently. You can see the spindle's crooked and the discs sit crooked and they kind of lean on this piece in the back. What is that doing? And there's this little pressure plate. Essentially, how this Garrard works and why I thought it was so fascinating, this is just one of the parts of it, is that when it's time to change a record, there's this little finger that pushes the record off the shelf and drops it down to be played. I've never seen anything like that. It's very fascinating to watch. It's also a little terrifying to watch. Um, and we can go into, at some point, if record changers are actually super dangerous for your records or We'll go into details there, but for now, know that this plays 78s very well with this weird mechanism. You'll also notice on the right side, you have the tone arm, but you have another arm there. It's just kind of hanging out there, and you can tell when I start it up, it swings out and taps the edge of the record. So, we have a little shelf that's pushing the records off, and then on the other side, we have this arm that's swinging out and tapping the record. So, looking at the process, together, what's happening 
is when we start this record player, it moves an arm out, it senses first if there's a record there, and if the record's there, it senses what size it is. Is it a 12-inch record, a 10-inch record, or a 7-inch record? So that's what this little thing is doing. Now, if it doesn't detect a record, it's just going to shut off. But if it detects a record, now it knows where to place the needle. The back shelf moves, well, back and forward, and this allows you to place either 10 or 12-inch records on the spindle and have them held. 7-inch records, we'll get to in a moment, because they can definitely play 45s. But that's how this mechanism works, so it would end up checking the size, pushing it off the shelf, and then playing it. And then when it was time to go to the next record, it would lift back up, move to the side, once again sense if there was a record there, and drop it. Now this is all done mechanically, there's no electronics here, so when you take a look at the bottom of this, there are just gears moving and and I had to get in there and try and figure out at one point why something wasn't working. And I want to thank Thane from Audio Karma for actually helping me out with that because I was lost. I was going to tear my hair out. Um, but I, I fixed it and I got in those gears and now it works. Uh, but it's a really fascinating record player to watch. Um, I'm not showing this to you because it's the best record player. I'm showing this to you because I just think it's cool. Um, and I have it in my collection. So here's a question, what about those 45s? There's this extra spindle which I purchased. Now this spindle, I was able to find it in its original box, was an accessory and it could be swapped out with the spindle that's normally in the center to give you a large hole that the 45s could sit on. And then what would happen is again the arm would come out, detect the record being there at 7 inches, and instead of pushing on the shelf, which shelf mechanism actually still moves, but it's not doing anything, there would be a little lever that would trigger something in the thick spindle, and it would drop the 45 to play the next one. And what's really cool about this spindle is you can go through and you can play a whole bunch of 45s, and then you can just pull all the records off of it because of the way the shelf is is angled. Now with the other spindle for regular 78s or regular records, if you're just going to play a 33 on a third record, you can actually remove the spindle and it allows you to take off all the discs instead of having to work it over that weird crooked spindle. So that allows, allows you to take it off, flip the stack over, place it back on, place something else on there, however you want to do it. I just think this is a really cool example of mid-century engineering. And this is a sort of turntable someone back then would have actually used to listen to a variety of records. Now, granted, being released in the 1960s, unless you already had a gigantic 78 collection, by the time the 60s rolled along, we were already had stereo uh, records, and which is why this this record player does have a stereo head on it. Uh, the cartridge on it right now is a short cartridge, uh, and it actually features swappable needles uh, because the 78 records and the 45 and the 33 RPM records, they, they use separate needles, and we can go into that in detail in a future video. Um, in fact, I want to show you my 16 RPM record, which is just insane when you see it, and it doesn't sound amazing, but subscribe because that's going to come forward in a future video, it's something just cool to show off. If you're looking for a mid-century record player, Garrard is going to be one of the brands you're going to see pop up. And from my experience, they're beautiful machines, but they're complex machines. And the same goes for other brands from that era. You have Thorin's um, and just a, a load of other options to choose from. Garrard just kind of stood out to me. They're based in the UK. I thought it was interesting. I liked the design on this one. Uh, the whole record pushing shelf, the feeling of the record, the, you know, uh, just very cool. You know, you push that when you push the switch to start it, you get this really mechanical, it's not a button, it's not like a light press, it's like a trunk. Um, which is really cool to see. So, but I want to share this record player with you. I hope you guys find it fascinating in some regards. So, stay tuned, subscribe. Again, we'll be diving into different record speeds. We'll be diving into, you know, more details on 78s. We'll be diving into why some 78s can be played on an acoustic Victrola and others should never be played on an acoustic Victrola. And actually, in my living room, I have an old Victrola from the 1920s, but I can't play everything on there. Why? Well, we'll address that. So, if you have any questions, looking for maybe a record player that does 78 RPM, which 
we can discuss, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye.